right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel, your 17th best source of news on the internet. And also, they got me looking like Gomer Pyle today. But the real topic for today is that crypto is up for its first consecutive weeks since 2018. And so we can take a look at that. And starting about eh, April 9th or so, we can see that big whale buy. And then ever since, we have been all the way up for about eh, two weeks now or so. So that's a pretty good thing. Also, uh, taking a look at the buy markets percentage here, we were up to 92.86% on the 19th, today is the 22nd, and uh, so this is lagging just a few days, a couple days here. Now we're uh, at 20% on the 20th, uh, so we might be down just a little bit more from that uh, on the 21st and 22nd. We'll have to see because this is just back uh, two days. Um, so that is also really good. So that means that nobody wants to sell right now. And when nobody wants to sell, that means the price is going on up. Now it's going up fairly slowly and it's doing a little dance on us up and down, uh, but that's okay because we are up from our low of uh, 6,000 or so just a couple months back. So sooner or later here, we will be on up. Uh, still, I think by the end of the year, maybe 25 to 35,000 or so with Bitcoin. I know a lot of people have much higher uh, predictions than that. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I want it to only be twenty five or 35000 but uh, that's what I think it's going to be, somewhere around there. I know that's a pretty big estimate, $10,000 uh, difference there, but I don't think it's going to be like seventy or 100000 like a lot of people think. But if it is, all the better, because that's good for me, that's good for us. But uh, I think a little bit more realistically, I'm a little bit more conservative on that price. Uh, I think the 20,000 was super hype at the end of the year. That was insane hype. Uh, and as you can see, what happened to it? Uh, let's just go to the all chart here. And I just don't think this is basically what happened. Went all the way up to 19,000 or 20,000 ish. You can't really see it too well. I can't zoom in on it very well here. I have to pull it back and uh, all the way here. Gets it a little bit easier. And uh, 20,800 ish at the top. And that was just pure hype. And so I don't think it'll return uh, much higher than that. It'll have to be a slow increase towards that. So uh, capping what many believe is a U-turn in of its fortune since December 2017, Bitcoin has increased in value by 35% in the past fortnight from lows of 64.87 April 1st before the uh, major rally kicked in later that day. So Bitcoin uh, US dollar saw several sudden upticks as this month progressed, culminating in Friday's uh, trip from below 7,000 to above 7,700 in minutes. At press time, prices remain even higher, testing resistance around 9,000 with just $60 left to climb, according to data from several major exchanges. Although we're a little bit further than that by now after writing and publishing this article. Uh, so if current levels hold, Bitcoin will succeed. Uh, in shunning losses for two weeks straight, something which hasn't uh, has yet to happen since its decline from last year's all-time highs around 20,000. So too much too soon. Despite optimism returning to markets, however, not everyone is convinced the latest performance will continue. In the latest edition of his uh, trading series, Serial Trader Tone Vase, it's a very weird name, cautioned viewers on assuming the downtrend of uh, Q1 2018 was over. Summarize his thoughts. Uh, Vase said he, he expected lower lows to reappear in the future and that he was overall bearish on Bitcoin's price. So last week began as uh, rising towards 8,200. Vase had even forecasted levels over 8,600 would immediately trigger a correction back to the lower territory around 6,500, which I don't think is going to happen. For the coming months, however, bullish voices from the investment sector have largely sounded out more prudent expectations. So again, uh, we're seeing a steady rise. Uh, also, we're seeing a, a, a tremendous amount of buying pressure. And again, if you watched my video, I think it was the last video or maybe two videos ago, uh, we, we were at 91%. And we haven't seen 91% since um, last year at some point. I think I have this at six months. We can point it back to like three years. And we haven't seen that much since uh, 2017, since March 2017, uh, when it was really, really high. So uh, we'll have to see. Of course, this always does go in waves. So we're at the at the height now, and we're likely to go back down. 
It's never really going to get to 100% buying because that's that doesn't really work like that. Uh, but it is a really good sign. Also, all of the investors that have been talking about, even J.P. Morgan, uh, you know, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, have, all those big names have actually started to turn their sentiment towards crypto uh, as opposed to being away from it just even four or five months ago. Um, whether or not they believe in it, is really sort of irrelevant. It's the fact that they want to make money off of it. And if they're buying it, then they're raising the price of it. Uh, but all of this could lead to, to bad things as well, because, you know, all these people that I've just named, essentially, not by themselves, of course, don't get me wrong here, but all of them essentially own virtually all the money in the world, for the most part. They're the 1%. Uh, and they're, apart from many other people, uh, some of the reason why we're in this inflationary crisis that the whole, basically the whole world is in at the moment, and the reason why everyone is switching to crypto. So if they get into crypto too, they can essentially just run crypto however they want to run crypto, uh, and that could be bad. So when whales have all of the money, they can do whatever they want. Crypto is not safe from whales. That's one thing, that's one very ironic thing about cryptocurrency is that we're trying to get away from the government, we're trying to get away from fiat, we're trying to get away from inflation, all those things, you name it, we're all trying to get away from it. Yet, it's still never safe, no, no currency is safe from people who have more money than you. And let's say that, you know, the currency was not tradable at all, uh, the whales would just dominate the mining sector. So there's no way to really get around this. If you only have a few thousand dollars to your name and you try to make a mining rig, uh, you're going to mine so much a day. And if somebody has millions or billions to their name and they make an entire warehouse of, of rigs, you're not even going to scratch the surface. Uh, just like today, just like today, you know, you might have a thousand or ten thousand dollars in your bank account. Well, that's nothing compared to the millions, billions and possibly trillions in some other people's bank accounts. So, um, you know, we're, we're not safe from the whales. It'll never be safe. So uh, New York to probe major cryptocurrency exchanges, according to CNBC, important New York attorney general Eric Schneiderman is currently investigating 13 different cryptocurrency exchanges. One of the most popular Bitcoin wallets, Coinbase, is also being investigated. As for the investigation, Schneiderman states, can't fool me on them German names. I know every time I read these articles, there's just always some weird Spanish name or something like that that I cannot pronounce. So either way, uh, so the exchange will be forced to supply information of its operation, safety measures, and internal controls. In the last few months, hackers and cyber criminals have targeted more cryptocurrency exchanges in order to steal users' funds. Schneiderman hopes uh, that this probe will help to make cryptocurrency exchanges more transparent and secure for their customers' funds. America added again. Uh... So I don't think it, it comes to anybody's anybody anyone's surprise. I don't know why I just faltered that, but uh, that America is going to be the one that would probably, in the end, ruin cryptocurrency. That's just uh, welcome to planet Earth, everybody. Like if that's a surprise to you, welcome to planet Earth. Uh, we have plenty of water and food and all kinds of fun things like theme parks. You should check them out before going to your voyage across the universe again. Welcome to planet Earth. Uh, so America, world police and uh, world monetary supply, essentially, uh, and good old uh, petrodollar recycling program uh, is not going to like cryptocurrency. And of course, they're going to do everything that they can to stop it. Now, they haven't outright banned it or anything like that, so that's good for now. Uh, but the way America likes to do things is little tiny, little tiny chips. They like to, uh, oh, what's that movie? The Shawshank Redemption. They like to just take a little bit out at a time and then put that dirt in their pants and then go out into the yard and spread the dirt around every time they're trying to make a tunnel out of their own cell. Uh, so that's the way America does things because, you know, the American people honestly aren't stupid. They just don't react well to little tiny things. Okay, so little, little tiny laws and little... Uh, my boy yelling in the background again, as usual. But uh, America doesn't react to little tiny changes. If it's just this little tiny ban, this little tiny ban, this little tiny change, no. Uh, but if there's a big change, like a total ban on cryptocurrency, there'd be a riot, right? Uh, so the way that you have to do things, it's almost like stealing a cigarette from somebody, right? Do you steal the whole pack of cigarettes or do you just take one? Because if you just take one cigarette out of the pack, 
where you just take a couple, uh, a little handful of change from their purse instead of their whole purse, uh, then they don't notice, right? But if you do, so then you can keep doing it. You can keep putting your hand in the cookie jar and taking just one cookie. If you take the whole cookie jar, then everybody knows what's up. So that's kind of how America works. Kraken won't comply, though. Good old Kraken. Uh, mo even though the exchange itself is kind of ugh, really slow and not that great for the most part. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of Kraken, but I do use Kraken from time to time. Uh, most exchanges were ready to hand over the data to Schneiderman, but one exchange decided to not comply. According to a CNBC report, Kraken, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, eh, kind of, will not hand over the requested information. The CEO and co-founder of Kraken, Jesse Powell, said, the resource division for this production uh, for this production is massive. This is going to comply, uh, completely blow up our roadmap. Then I realized we had we made this wi the wise decision to get the hell out of New York three years ago and that uh, we can dodge this bullet. So the uh, CEO also added, ordinarily, we're happy to help the government understand our business. However, this is not the way to go about it. Kraken left New York because New York is hostile to crypto, and this questionnaire we received today proves that New York is not only hostile to crypto, uh, it is hostile to business. So most cryptocurrency exchanges and companies have left New York because they were required to obtain a bit license in order to operate. So Coinbase is... Um, really starting to hand over a little bit too much information to the government. They're a little, uh, so th this one is sort of a joke. Uh, it it's a real article, but I only put it on here just because brace yourselves. Coin Daddy. Another crypto rapper rhymes about crypto life, or Bitcoin life, rather. Uh, not even gonna read the article. Nope, check it. This is, this is Coin Daddy. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh no, we got more. We got more. So from left to right, we got Coin Daddy here. We got Lil Windex. We got YT Cracker. Grammatic. Okay, so that's a regular normal name. He looks like a normal person. This kind of kind of looks like a normal person, but with a stupid name. And Chris Record. Uh, also, okay, I suppose. All of these artists have incorporated cryptocurrencies into their music tracks. All right. Uh, do I even want to play this? No, I don't. That's real, though. Those are real people. Crypto-friendly cheap air. Ask customers for feedback on switching away from Coinbase. Uh, so first of all, never name your air company cheap air. Just like cheap medical or cheap dental, anything like that, don't put cheap in the name. Uh, not to say that like these airplanes go down, crash, or anything like that. But let's just say that if I had to pay 50 extra bucks for a ticket for an airline that was not called Cheap Air, I would do that. I'm just throwing that out there for you guys in case Cheap Air is watching this. I really, really doubt that. But just, uh, just get at me. I think I can help your company a little bit. We'll go ahead and switch that name. The CEO of US-based flight aggregator Cheap Air has published an open letter to customers on April 20th asking for opinions on a merchant solution to switch from uh, to BitPay over uh, crypto wallet and exchange service Coinbase. So uh, he wrote in a letter that uh, CheapAir.com accepted Bitcoin for flight and hotel booking since 2013 According to the CEO, Coinbase's recent notification that they will suspend custodial solutions for merchants uh, will make accepting Bitcoin more difficult. So in response to the upcoming Coinbase changes, Glee uh, suggests that uh, the company implement a reliable processing partner to begin accepting Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Litecoin, in addition to Bitcoin. So Klee brings up uh, BitPay whose merchant solution currently accepts only Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash as an alternative to Coinbase in his letter, citing that they had great expectations with them so far and our integration is largely complete. However, Klee adds that since BitPay requires particular protocol compliant wallets, he doesn't want to inconvenience customers that have a different type. So uh, Coinbase, man, you guys are just screwing up lately. Uh, so I like Coinbase because it just works for me and it works for most Americans for trading and things like that. But uh, Coinbase is really becoming compliant, complicit with the government and things like that. So uh, I still like Coinbase, but I can see why a lot of people don't like Coinbase. They're, they're suspending custodial accounts. 
They're just cooperating with the government a little too closely uh, when they really don't have to as as much as they are. They could just be like, hey, government, why don't you go take a hike? You know, we're not going to do what you want. Sorry. Uh, but they're an American-based company, too, at the same time. So, eh. So the code for Ethereum's consensus change is now ready for review. New code written to change the way the Ethereum network reaches consensus is now ready for review, developer said Friday. So this was like the proof of stake um, dealio here. Ethereum improvement pro uh, proposal uh, 1011, known as Hybrid Casper, F FG, short for Friendly Finality Gadget. Uh, boy, they didn't, they didn't try that hard on that one would implement the first step in a long plan shift away from the energy intensive mining process and toward an allegedly greener method, sometimes called minting. Ethereum's current consensus protocol, the way the network agrees to add a new block to the chain, is called proof of work. It requires resources to expand as its proof. Ethereum's creator, Vitalik Buterin, and other developers have discussed eventually moving to a proof of stake model in which users lock up Ether in special wallets and risk losing these stakes if they don't follow the consensus rules. That plan transition to proof of stake is known as Casper. So if implemented, would be the first would be a first partial step toward the full move to Casper, introducing a hybrid system that combines proof of work and proof of stake, an approach discussed in papers unveiled this year or last year. Uh, so Casper, while long in the making, is still controversial in some quarters. For example, a security research researcher called it a uh, fundamentally vulnerable last month. Yet Danny Ryan, one of uh, EIP's authors, along with uh, Chi, Chi Cheng Ling, wow, that's intense, told fellow developers during a meeting Friday that the pr proposal's code is ready for review, community discussion, etc. Notice how I did not say etc. I can't stand that. Why do people say etc.? It's etc. Come on, it's not that hard. I see it on TV. I see it in the news. I see it everywhere. It's etc. etc. You know, it's not act etc. There's, there's the, the T... The C is not before the T. Sorry, this is my little rant on etc. I'm like the only person I know that says it properly. Come on, let's get real. Ryan added the development work for Ethereum clients could begin soon, and that he was corresponding with the formal verification engineers as these pieces of the puzzle were getting closer to being completed. He said, I'll signal that it's time to start talking about fork block numbers. As Ryan suggests, the change will not be compatible with existing Ethereum software, meaning that the network will have to undergo a hard fork to be implemented. That said, there's still some way uh, to go before that happens. And in terms of testing, I don't know when exactly that happens. Ryan continued, adding that he would leave the EIP up for discussion a little bit longer before we start doing testing on that side. Uh, so proof of stake coming for Ethereum sooner or later here, um, which again will benefit uh, those who have a lot of Ethereum to stake in the first place, uh, just like those who have uh, big mining rigs are the ones collecting all of the Ethereum now. So it doesn't really change too much, but it does uh, reduce uh, it does reduce the electricity cost of mining significantly, even though I think all of those miners will just end up transferring all of their uh, hash power to something else. Uh, anyway, so if Ethereum went proof of stake tomorrow, everybody would just stop uh, mining Ethereum and they would just go to Zcash or, uh, or like Equihash or Kryptonite or anything, uh, Lira2, Kryptonite, uh, whatever, all those sort of things. I think I just messed up my camera pretty bad there. Little cord on the ground. Ooh, that cord. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and that's all I got for you today. But keep on hodling, and I will see you guys next time.